let's continue down the road of learning as we rebuild this old bike. And for that, we're gonna need wheels. This bike came with two pair. The owner had a training pair and a race pair. Both sets are tubular rims using tubular tires. That's a tire casing sewn around an inner tube that are glued to rims like these. The training pair are 36 hole, two millimeter diameter spokes. A classic, the super champ Arc-en-Ciel, which is French for rainbow, as in the world championship stripes. However, the rear is a Fiamme, which in Italian means flames. How fun is that? Normally, the two should be the same. Why are they different? We can suspect, we're probably right, the rear smashed something at some time and was rebuilt. As I was cleaning the rim, there are some things I wanted you to see. Right here. This is a typical type of mark from a deformed section of rim. During braking, the metal pushes back against the pads, leaving an uneven mark. Using the TM1 and the WTA wheel tension app, we can do a chart and see there's a disturbance in the force right here. Number 12 has an issue, which is right next to this mark. We can surmise it was right here. It got dinged pretty good. The wheel seems to be running pretty straight, so not a huge deal. However, try not to hit it here anymore. There is something else, something more subtle. It's easier to see when the rim is polished. The spokes are pulling at each rim eyelet, but note this square-shaped rim has deformed a bit. See it here, mostly on the drive side. Potentially, that can mean the spokes are too tight and are pulling and deforming at each eyelet. But this is where the TM1 is handy. This wheel is tight, not overly tight, and with these light rims in that shape, you're gonna get some of that. The race pair are also running 36 holes, but built with thinner 1.8 butted spokes. The front is laced with lightweight aluminum nipples, saving even more grams. But the rear was built with brass on the drive side and then aluminum on the non-drive side. So why do that? It's a known fact that the owner became a mining engineer and likely got out the Texas Instrument calculator and knowing that brass is a slightly higher tensile factor than aluminum, knew that the brass should be on the tighter side and your aluminum on the lighter non-drive. Did it help? Not really. The aluminum can take the stress of the drive side just fine. But hey, if it's your field, you might as well overthink those decisions that involve metals. At the intersection of all this spoke goodness are these high flange hubs. This manufacturer is legendary for smooth running components. Let's have a look at the inside. This rear axle has some interesting witness marks on both sides. Like something has rubbed off the plating. The axle is straight, but what could cause this rubbing? Remember, metal flexes, including steel, just sitting on the bike will bow and flex that axle just a little bit, especially the freewheel style. Now, compare it to the free hub style. The bracing angle of the cones is further out. It's still the same material, but better bracing angles causes less bowing. See how the cones are set further apart? The wider bracing handles the load better than the freewheel design. And speaking of freewheels, the owner, like any racer worth their salt, had a variety of freewheels to select from. I'm hoping one of these oldies will work with the new chain, but we're gonna have to test ride it to see. Let's have a look at our options. Our first contestant, hailing from France, is a Maillard 6-speed, 13 to 18. Here's a look at the back side of the teeth and a spin. Next up, we have the Shimano Dura-Ace 6-speed from Japan, 13 to 21. Here's the teeth and a spin. Also from Japan, the Sun Tour 7-speed, 13 to 22. The teeth and a spin. Coming all the way from Italy, the Regina CX, 13 to 23. The teeth, and here's a spin. 
Again from France, Maillard six speed, 13 to 24. Here's the chompers and a spin. Last up, we go back to Italy, a standard Regina Oro, brass plated, 13 to 21. Here are the teeth and a spin. Not the nicest sounding bearings, but you do get style points with this one because you can polish the brass plating. Those are the six contestants. Which one is going to get matched to our race wheel on the bike that we're rebuilding and learning from? Let us know in the comments below what you think as we continue on the road to learning.